Justice uh, Preet Bharara, and I'm the U.S. Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Uh, we're here to do something today that is not what we uh, usually do, but it's not that uncommon uh, in this office. We're here today to return a painting uh, by Roy Lichtenstein uh, called Electric Core to its rightful owner, and from time to time we actually do that in this office in addition to all the other things that we do criminally and civilly. We, we are an office that also spends time figuring out ways to bring uh, art that has either been lost or stolen back to their rightful owners. And in fact, this is not the first time that we've actually returned a piece of work by this artist, by Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, about two years ago, in this very room, we returned a painting called Modern Painting with Yellow Interweave to the government of Brazil, and maybe some of you were here and, and remember that. Um, just very briefly, by way of a background, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this painting, Electric Cord, was was done by Roy Lichtenstein in 1961. Uh, Leo Castelli, uh, a well-known American art dealer, acquired it in the early 1960s for the, uh, the bargain price of about $750. Uh, it is now worth about $4 million. Uh, it was displayed after the purchase by the Castelli Gallery for a number of years. And then in January of 1970, the art gallery sent it out to be cleaned. Uh, the gallery sent it to an art restorer by the name of Daniel Goldreyer, uh, but as uh, most of you know by now, it never came back. And in 2006, after spending some amount of time trying to figure out what had become of this Lichtenstein piece, uh, the Roy Lichtenstein Foundation published an image of the electric cord on the front of its holiday greeting card and asked the art community to help. And that didn't immediately re uh, result in any uh, success. But again, as, as some of you know now, in July of this year, painting resurfaced uh, at a storage facility here in New York, and that's what uh, leads us here today. So it was around that time that the FBI was contacted, and uh, events uh, were undertaken, uh, events uh, occurred, and actions were undertaken by our office along with the FBI and ICE. Uh, essentially, after we found out that the painting had surfaced and we figured out uh, who the rightful owners were, we were prepared to take legal action in court to return the painting from the widow of Daniel Goldreyer, Sally to the rightful owner, uh, but at the end of the day, I can report that we were uh, pleased that Mrs. Goldreyer did the right thing, and we were able to enter into a stipulation uh, just last week, allowing for the return of the painting without having to go to court. Uh, and so for uh, more than four decades after it disappeared, we are, we are really delighted to have played a role in securing the return of this painting by the internationally renowned artist, Roy Lichtenstein, to its rightful owner. Returning stolen art and artifacts is an important mission of this office, and it is always gratifying when we are successful in being able to do that. Let me thank a few folks and then call a couple of people up to the podium. I want to thank the FBI Special Agents Meredith Savona and Adam Roser and ICE Agent Brad Greenberg. I also want to thank uh, folks from my office, the Asset Forfeiture Chief Sharon Cohen-Levin, Assistant U.S. Attorney Sarah Paul, and also Lisa Mandola D'Andrea. Uh, now let me bring to the podium Mel Chen, Assistant Special Agent in Charge in the FBI's Criminal Division. Good afternoon. My name is Bell Chen. I'm the Acting Special Agent in Charge of the FBI's Criminal Division. The FBI is pleased to have had a role in the return of Roy Lichtenstein's electric cord to its rightful owner. It serves the interests of justice, and that is really what the FBI is about. The New York FBI's our crime program is not nearly our largest program, but it is a significant program because works of art, antiquities, and rare collectibles have more than just high monetary value. They often have important or even iconic cultural value. Attention to the intersection of collectibles and commerce has grown in the last several years, with records being set at auctions for paintings, sports memorabilia, and, and wine. But FBI agents in New York have been involved in, this, in, in investigations in this field since before Roy Lichtenstein's painted electric cord. Even when there is no crime charged, the FBI's expertise can be valuable in ensuring that works of art end up with their rightful owners. That's what was done in this matter. I want to commend the outstanding work of FBI Special Agents Meredith Savona and Adam Roser, who was ably assisted by Homeland Security Investigation Special Agent Bradley Greenberg. 
in reuniting Roy Lichtenstein's electric cord and Barbara Castelli. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. And now let me call to the podium Barbara Castelli. expected to see the painting. <laughs> it's the first time I'm seeing it in my lifetime. Uh, but uh, maybe um, I really never thought it was going to come back so quickly after it was seen last uh, June. And, and so I think you did a wonderful job and I really appreciate it. And I think it's also something I can say on behalf of uh, of the Lichtenstein Foundation. I think uh, everybody appreciated what you did uh, for the importance that the painting has, uh, not only financially, I think uh, that is, uh, after all, the least of it, but really it's one of the very, very first pop painting that Roy did in 1961, and I think it was a big loss for everybody. It's actually a fairly timely uh, thing, given that, as, as many of you may know, that uh, the National Gallery is actually hosting a retrospective of Roy Lichtenstein's work in art. Uh, I think it just began on Sunday in Washington. Uh, anyway, happy to take your questions, if there are any. Yeah. Um, we, we, yeah we are, all we're doing today is, is announcing the return of the, uh, of the painting and not commenting on So I, I actually uh, can tell you that Leo spoke on several occasions to me about this painting. He was saying uh, it was a very beautiful painting and he remembered it and he didn't know where it had gone <laughs> somehow. So uh, I knew of the painting, but I have never seen it in person. I think uh, that I'm going to hang it up in my home. <laughs> I guess uh, check uh, that it is in good uh, shape. First of all, it looks good. Maybe frame it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to comment. As I, as you know, I, I don't comment about investigations. Uh, right now, I can say that we're just very pleased that the painting turned up and we're able to return to its rightful home. said the, the painting was sent out to be restored and cleaned, and it went missing, and then it turned up you know, some four decades later, and now we've returned it today. The widow is the person who saw on, on behalf of the, the restoring uh, company signed the, the stipulation to return it. Uh, I'm not going to comment beyond what's in the press release. It speaks for itself. Sometimes, you know, I still work in the gallery and sometimes we actually don't really understand the much. Uh, I understand when you say a painting is worth three million, four million, so it's a lot of money, but you kind of like in your everyday uh, business life in an art gallery, you don't really look at things uh, for the price they have or the financial value. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking that way all the time, I would say. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't want anybody in 
gel, but I, I don't think I'm going to comment on things that they are not commenting. <laughs> so. She learns quickly. <laughs> right. Thanks, everybody.